Hello and welcome everyone to our presentation today. My name is Markus Lippert and in the next 15 minutes I will guide you through our results on power cycling of silicon carbide power modules and will give you an outline of what our plans are in the coming future. Before we get to that, however, I've got a short introduction on star power in general, just a few facts and figures to give you an overview for those of you who have not heard much of us before. Um, as you can see, we have a technical team based in Germany and also a sales team based for Europe, based in Switzerland, of which I'm part of as well. And I'm happy to answer further questions um, and go into more details on a one-to-one -one session later on. But today's session is about power cycling and about silicon carbide. Um, so let's get into it. Um, when we talk about reliability testing for power modules, um, there's a number of tests which are pretty much standard um, in, in the industry. All manufacturers perform them. And um, let's say um, in, in terms of silicon carbide, especially, uh, a lot of those tests have been done. We've done them all. A lot of uh, work has been done on the humidity testing, and there's also new standard work on the way. Um, but let's say the, what we want to focus on today is power cycling in particular. Uh, it's a very important test, uh, especially to get an idea on the lifetime of the module, on long-term operation, uh, on thermomechanical stress, and to get also an idea whether the modules actually fit for purpose for the application or not. Um, so one of the key aspects which we wanted to find out uh, performing the tests were uh, basically, as we've done a lot of tests on silicon IGBTs before, whether the results for silicon carbide are different or not. If yes, how those differences could be interpreted. And of course, very important for us as a manufacturer of power modules, what could we do uh, in terms of uh, um, the assembly and process technology to counter those effects and make the module reliable? So um, for those of you not familiar with the test as such, uh, I've got a quick overview about what we did. So basically, what we're looking at here is an, an active heating, an active cooling test. So the module is basically mounted on a water cooler, which uh, gives an forced active cooling to define temperature around 50 degrees. We can we 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 angle here, but um, low as possible as well, and also an active heating, which is achieved by applying a current to the module. So the losses of the chip basically heat the module to define temperature. Um, you can do power cycling uh, with different cycle length and by changing the cycle length you change different, uh, you, you test different things in the module. So with short cycles you test mainly the bond wires. Um, with longer cycles you test uh, ideally the, the, the connection, the chip connection uh, between chip and DCB. At least that's the status for IGBT modules. So what we want to look at in our test series here are long power cycles. And then of course the, the delta T, which you choose, um, usually you choose a delta T between 80 and 120 Kelvin. Um, so you use a large delta T to give you an idea of um, how the module performs or let's say to accelerate the test, even though in reality you would uh, never use such, uh, such, such large temperature range and then you extrapolate your ex results to what actually happens in your application. And when you do that, uh, what you would normally achieve or, um, is something like that. This is a classic curve for an IGBT. And um, so far, um, a lot of our customers have come to us and said this, this is something they would like for silicon carbide as well. Um, and on the market, there's not so much information. So we thought we have to um, investigate here and put some resources into testing. So what did we test? Uh, we selected um, some 
standard um, 62 millimeter packages from our silicon carbide range. So a 1200 volt and a 1700 volt modules. They're both using um, the chip technology from the same manufacturer. Um, so it's a, a Gen 2 and a Gen 3, a trench and a planar. So you've got uh, different two different chip types. Um, we also have a, a sintered die attached, which is uh, something we do standard for all silicon carbide modules. And um, we use uh, an aluminum nitride um, as a substrate material. We use uh, aluminum bond wires. Again, this is a standard process for uh, most of our modules we manufacture. And um, we set uh, a cycle time of 15 seconds on and 15 seconds off. So total cycle length is, is 30 seconds. And we run the test to end of life. And let's say um, when you do that, of course, there's uh, two different options how you can do that. Um, the, the first one is what you see here is with uh, a delta T constant. This is uh, a method widely used to make results comparable between different manufacturers. Um, so we use that method as well, which uh, of course has the benefit of uh, helping in comparison of power modules uh, for the customer, but it has a bit of a downside because uh, a constant delta T of course is not really, um, let's say, what the customer would do in the application. So consequently, if you look at the results, you see on the, the graph on the right, um, you see the, the gate voltage increases. So why is that the case? Um, as basically uh, the theory goes, then as the, 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 gun, the, the bond connection loosens, or let's say the chip DCB connection, but for, for soldered modules normally, um, the RTH increases and you have, uh, let's say, um, more current flowing over a smaller area. So what you need to do uh, basically is reduce the current. Um, and this is what, what, the, what the machine does by increasing the gate voltage. Uh, and then you reach a certain point, which is for our machine 25 volt, where you have a maximum and uh, at 25 volt, the machine basically shuts off and that's the end of the test. And this is probably not so far off uh, from reality because most gate drivers would probably enact similar, uh, act similarly. So the result is about 21 K cycles. Um, and if you look into inside the module after test, what you see is the classic uh, failure me mechanism bond lift off and bond shift. So bond lift off basically means a single bond uh, is, uh, is, has lifted off. Uh, bond shift means that a whole set or let's say a whole series of bonds can be pushed away and basically have lost connection. And we sit um, as the, the thermal resistance is um, different uh, within the module between top and bottom, switch we uh, performed the, the test again for the bottom switch and the result we see is quite similar. Um, a few cycles more, but uh, let's say quite comparable results. This is for the 1200 volt. Um, and if you look inside the module again, you see the failure mechanism is exactly the same. So it's always bond lift. Um, then we did the same test for the 1700 volt. And remember, uh, the 1200 volt was a, a trench uh, IGBT 1700 volt as a planar chip. Um, we don't know if it's a difference, but it's definitely a different technology what we tested. And we see um, certainly the number of cycles is higher. So we have uh, 27, 26 and a half, roughly uh, 1000 cycles. Um, what we also see is that, interestingly, the gate voltage basically doesn't increase at all. So we see at the end of the test, we see a spike in VDS, which we attribute to an array of bond wires lifting off. But the, 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 the gate voltage itself, as such hasn't changed. So the RTH remains the same. The current uh, flow remains the same. So um, 
contrast to the results we saw on the on the 1200 volt there's obviously a different effect ultimately if we look into the module let's say uh, visually the failure um, mechanism or let's say the the failure uh, what we see is the same as it was a spawn lift off but here what uh, compared to the 1200 volt what we notice is that more bond wires at the same time have been uh, or let's say have lifted off on more chips and you can easily push them away as you can see on the circled ones and then we conducted the same test again um, with um, for for the bottom switch which uh, shows similar results so again uh, the gate voltage increases only marginally um, and there's at the end of the test a big spike in vds so same same idea same results as on the bond lifts off as you can see here um, yeah so basically to to sum up the results quickly um, we see definitely an increase in in the number of cycles between the different uh, 1200 volt and 1700 volt chips you can also say between the different uh, chip technologies uh, whether this is a general technological trend, we can't say because we only tested from one manufacturer, but there certainly have been differences. Um, and then um, let's say the second round of tests, which is still going, um, we did uh, an, uh, the test variant va variation, which is also um, described in the, in the norm in the AQG324, which basically means that you leave the current constant. And this is more of a test which is uh, closer to what the customer would experience as well, because in the application, of course, you want a certain constant current or let's say a certain current requirement, um, what the act uh, actual application dictates. So. Um, and here, of course, what we then would expect is an increase uh, in delta T, because uh, um, that's 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 what normally happens. Then that was would be the counter effect if you if you leave the if you um, leave the current at a certain rate. If you can't regulate the current down, then you would in have an increase in delta T, and that would be the failure criteria. Um, interestingly, of course, what we do see, however, is again a steady increase in VDS. So again, it's something on the bonds rather than the, the chip die connection. And this is not surprisingly because we use uh, a sintered uh, connection here, which is very reliable. So it's, uh, let's say, it probably hints to the bond wires in general. What we also see is a very steady and stable RD, uh, RTH over the lifetime of the module. Um, and this is basically um, attributed again to the sintered uh, silver connection we have, which gives you very good, um, let's say, stability for your application. Um, yeah, but of course, what we also see is that the number of cycles is significantly lower. So where does that take us now? Um, so, we, so far we have tested, as I said, we have tested two different chip technologies from one manufacturer. Um, so to have comparison, we will extend those tests and we will test another um, chip technology as well, another chip generation, the latest chip generation to see if there's any differences in there. But uh, let's say current results hint definitely to the bond connection. So, um, let's say the focus in terms of um, module assembly technology and module making technology will be in further improving this bond connection. Uh, this will be by, um, let's say, by using copper. So we will run tests on, uh, on sintering, top side sintering and bonding with copper wires. And uh, let's say we'll, we'll see, we'll repeat the tests and we'll see where that finds us. Uh, for the customer, of course, uh, the current results give in first uh, estimation on a high delta T of where the current generation of uh, standard, uh, um, let's say, silicon carbide MOSFETs is in terms of module reliability uh, on the power cycling. Um, and they can have a safe estimate when designing in the applications 
of what lifetime they will likely achieve. If you have any further questions, please contact me after the presentation or use the forum to ask your questions straight in. Thank you very much.